Should we be buying beneficial insects for the garden? It's something that many of us have probably done before, and we do it from a good place because we don't want to use pesticides, but is it always a good thing to do? Well, on the surface, it may seem better to be buying beneficial insects than using pesticides. It's just not that simple. There are a lot of factors that you've probably never considered when it comes to buying beneficial insects, and we're going to talk about them today. Now, remember that all of the advice that I give you here is based off of my own experience here at the farm and our regenerative gardening practices. If you want to learn more about regenerative gardening and the way that we do it, we have a full course available online. But for the purposes of today's video, it does not mean that you have to garden in this way. I'm just trying to give you the information so that you have the best knowledge moving forward. Now we've all been there. We're at the garden center. Maybe we've been having some aphid issues in the garden. And as we're checking out, there's that little fridge full of beneficial insects, a cute little box or bag full of ladybugs. So we think, I'll give this a try. Ladybugs eat aphids. I'm going to release these in my garden. Well, there can be unintended consequences of doing this. Now again, buying beneficial insects comes from a good place. We do it because we don't want to use pesticides and we think, let me let nature take care of this instead. This is a classic case of humans thinking that we can step in and fix nature. And we do this all the time in the garden. Now the garden in itself really isn't a natural place. We come in, we remove a lot of things. We like to have it look nice and neat and orderly. And so in doing that, often we remove a lot of the things that help foster beneficial insects like leaf piles, piles of mulch and brush, uh, bits of pine cones and things where beneficial insects can nest and hide, patches of bare soil where some of these things like to nest, and native plants that can spread aggressively. A lot of times we're coming in and removing those plants, which are actually really great for attracting beneficial insects. So the garden in and of itself is usually not a really natural place. It's something that we've come in and interfered quite a bit with. We come into the garden and we kind of clean it of anything that resembles a true ecosystem. And we replace it with manicured lawns and gardens, which looks really nice and neat and orderly, but really isn't the way that nature functions. We think that adding a marigold or a nasturtium into our garden is biodiversity. And that's just such a minimal way of thinking about biodiversity. We throw up our hands and we go to Google and we say, okay, how can I help get rid of pests in my garden? And a lot of times what comes up is, hey, you should try buying ladybugs or buying these beneficial insects. But how does that impact the ecosystem of the garden? The first place we turn is typically ladybugs. And that's because ladybugs tend to be the most affordable. They're also the most widely available and the easiest to find. Most garden centers carry them during the gardening season. So it's the most popular option, but is it a good idea to buy ladybugs? Well, first we need to know a little bit about the harvest of ladybugs. So they're usually harvested from the foothills of the Sierras in California. Typically some of them are harvested from Colorado and they're harvested during their hibernation stage. So usually they're kind of nestle at the base of trees all together and the ladybug harvesters can actually come in and just scoop them off the tree and into a pail or bucket. So it's very easy for them to harvest them in mass. They can harvest a lot of them at one time. This has actually led to really problematic things like ladybug poaching. Uh, the whole situation on harvesting ladybugs is kind of a gray area. And it's just now beginning to be studied how much of this impacts the ecosystem and the population of the ladybugs that we're harvesting from where they're hibernating. So that's one consideration is that when you think about that we're coming in and harvesting billions of ladybugs from their natural habitat, that's not gonna be great for that ecosystem or for their population moving forward. The other thing that we have to consider is that there's somewhere around 500 species of ladybugs in North America alone. So this means that the type that are available at the garden center in your little box is probably not the kind that's native to your region. This is important for a couple reasons. It's like when we look at European honeybees and their impact on native bees. They can outcompete the natives for nectar. The same thing happens with ladybugs. So if we bring in hundreds of these non-native ladybugs to our garden, there are a couple issues. One is that they can end up outcompeting our native ladybugs. They can also bring diseases with them. So because they're being harvested from the wild and they're not native to your area, they can bring in disease that may otherwise not have been present in your area's ladybugs. So we're spreading potential disease issues as well. So this can lead to actually the decimation of your native ladybug population that is meant to thrive and do well in your climate. The other issue with buying ladybugs is that it's kind of a waste of money. All right, so we go and we buy them. We can follow all of the recommended procedures, which is to release them at dusk, to make sure that there's some water source around, and also to make sure that there's a food source, so usually aphids. And even if we make sure that we have all of those three things going on when we release them, 
Studies show that we still lose around 95 to 98% of the ladybugs that we release in our garden. They fly away. Why? Because they were harvested during hibernation stage. They are genetically wired to wake up from their hibernation and fly away. And that's just what the science has shown us. They have done, there have been multiple studies on how many ladybugs stay in your garden. It is a very, very small amount. They disperse everywhere. So you're wasting your money at the end of the day anyway. To add one more reason behind why you should not be buying ladybugs is that really it's the larval stage of ladybugs that eat the most number of aphids. So if you're trying to battle aphids in your garden, what you want are the larvae of the ladybug, not the full grown adult ladybugs, but the larvae. Those are going to eat the most. So buying the adult ladybugs, we're just decimating an ecosystem, threatening our own native ecotypes of ladybugs. So just I don't recommend it. I don't do it. If you still are set on ordering ladybugs, a couple things. Make sure that they are lab grown, not wild harvested. So you can order lab grown ladybugs online, which means that they're not going to be bringing in the diseases that the wild harvested ones do. And the other thing is that they work better inside. So greenhouse production, an area where they can't fly away is where they're going to work the best because they'll lay eggs, they'll have larvae, and those larvae, again, are really the aphid eating machines. All right, the second beneficial insect that I often see recommended are lacewings. And lacewings are a little bit better of an option because you get them in egg form and they hatch. So the larvae of the lacewing are also very heavy eaters of aphids. First of all, make sure that you're ordering something that is native to your region. And secondly, if you're going to be ordering lace wings, go for the brown ones because the brown ones actually eat more in their adult stage than the green lace wings do. The green lace wings mostly are eating them in their larval stage. The brown just kind of body weight wise, they just eat more. But there's a but. This sounds all well and good. Lace wings will eat more than just aphids. They will eat beneficial insects in your garden. So when we're looking at this from a regenerative standpoint and the idea of gardening with nature, what we don't want to be doing is stepping in and trying to say, okay, I am nature now. I am telling the system what is going to be out of balance. We are going to bring in this huge population of one insect, right? That's probably going to lead to some other issues when we're looking at these insects eating other beneficials in our garden. Anyway, if you are going to go with lace wings, again, the larval stage is when they're really eating a lot. So you'll get them as little eggs hatch. Make sure that you're putting them close to the food source because they can't really travel that far in their larval stage. When they get wings, they will fly away. Hey, another one that I see recommended that I would not recommend buying are praying mantis. And that's because most of the praying mantis that we find in the garden center are from China or Europe. They are actually not native to North America. Again, this recommendation is for people who are in North America. Most of the prey mantis that we're getting from the garden center, not native, and they will eat anything. They'll eat your bees, they'll eat beneficial insects, hoverflies, beneficial wasps, um, ladybugs. They will eat whatever they can get their little creepy arms on, okay? Including each other. Some entomologists actually even recommend destroying praying mantis egg sacs when you see them in your garden because they're usually the non-native ones. I don't like to do that myself because I can't really differentiate which ones are native and which ones aren't, so I just don't mess with them. But if you're buying them in, they are usually the ones from China, Europe, they're not the ones that are native to North America. So again, we're throwing off the balance of the ecosystem in the garden by buying in these praying mantis and potentially doing damage to our beneficial insect population as well. So the theme here is that we can't buy our way out of a garden that doesn't have the ecosystem to foster beneficial insects. Even if we're bringing in good insects, there is still going to be a balance that is getting thrown off artificially by human interference in doing this. The best thing to do is going to be to try to create an ecosystem within the garden that is going to foster beneficials, leaving little piles of leaf mulch here and there for them to nest in and burrow in and take shelter in little habitat spaces here and there, piles of brush, piles of sticks, stop cleaning up the garden quite so much. And one of the really big keys is planting native plants. Some of the plants that I hear most recommended for attracting things like ladybugs to the garden are actually borderline invasive in many parts of North America. So things like sweet alyssum, very invasive in California, dill, fennel, non-native plants. And yes, they will attract those things to your garden. The ladybugs in particular like those umbral shaped flowers, but so do things like hoverflies. And so the recommendation has been sweet alyssum, dill, fennel, because we have forgotten about the great native plants that actually do a better job at attracting the native beneficials. So when we're looking at that, one of my favorites is actually golden alexander. 
golden alexander, there is a native golden alexander to pretty much all of North America, either Zizia aptera or Zizia aria. One prefers wetter conditions, one prefers drier conditions. And that is an umbral shaped flower. It's going to be great at attracting ladybugs. Another one that I really like is pearly everlasting, which attracts a wide range of beneficial wasps hoverflies, all kinds of things. Yarrow is another great one for attracting beneficial insects and people tend to push it away because it's invasive. Well, it's not, it's an aggressive plant, yarrow can be, but so can dill and fennel be. If you've ever planted dill and fennel in your garden, they can spread out of control in your garden as well. So focus on bringing those native plants into the perimeter of your gardens, places where they have a little bit more room to spread. You don't have to worry about them spreading as much. And incorporating those native plants is really gonna help with bringing in the beneficial insects that you want in your garden. And we won't have to worry about throwing off the balance by bringing in too many of one thing. When we're looking at the regenerative garden, we need to remember that we are trying to foster nature and to help nature be her most efficient and create her best ecosystem and provide that without stepping in and saying, how can I buy this, right? How can I buy this piece of the ecosystem in? We are never really going to be able to buy a piece of the ecosystem in. We have to grow it and foster it and create it. Now, the exception to this, of course, is greenhouse indoor growing situation. So because in an indoor growing situation, we're not really it's different, right? We're not growing in nature. We don't have all the same access to all the different bugs and beneficials and things that can come and go as they please like in an outdoor garden. So greenhouse use of things like lab-grown ladybugs or lace wings, those are kind of exceptions to the rule. Now, I still wouldn't go releasing a bunch of non-native bugs into my greenhouse because they will go somewhere probably eventually when you open the doors, but to still go with the lab-grown so that you're not spreading disease but the indoor use is a little bit different than outdoor garden use. If you watched all this and you're still like, I don't care, I'm still gonna buy something. There's only one that I would recommend really buying for aphids and it is the aphid midge. And it specifically eats a ton of aphids. It has a rapid life cycle and they eat a lot of aphids and they're native to most of the Northern hemisphere. So I'm gonna put that one right here in the tab below so that you can read it. But the aphid midge is one that you would probably be the best off with if you still insist on trying to buy in a beneficial insect, especially to help with things like aphids. I hope that this was helpful in some way and that you got something from it. And if so, please remember to like and subscribe. We love when you do that and when you comment and share any experience that you have with beneficial insects in your garden. We love to hear it. All right, guys, we'll see you next time around here at the farm.